Top 5 Missing and Kidnapped People Found Alive There are all types of people out there, but hell has a very special place for kidnappers that keep people for their own twisted desires. Luckily enough, these individuals are strong and resilient. Regardless of what happened, they kept it together and eventually they escaped. I would also like to point out that more than half of this list were kidnapped while walking to or from school. So please, keep an eye out on your children. A two-mile walk is still a long walk away from you. Sean Hornbeck Held in captivity for four years and three months. Sean Hornbeck was only 11 years old when he was kidnapped on the 6th of October 2002. He was riding a bike to his friend's house when he was kidnapped at gunpoint by Michael Devlin. He was taken back to his apartment about an hour away. Sean was sexually abused and tortured while bound to a futon for about a month before Michael Devlin decided to bring him to the woods and try to strangle him. Sean negotiated with Michael and said that he would never escape and reveal his identity to anyone if he let him live. A little over four years later, in late 2006, and Sean was 15 years old, Michael Devlin started searching for a younger boy. On the 8th of January 2007, he found Ben Ownby, a 13-year-old boy walking home from school. He abducted him at gunpoint. Michael would then molest Ben Ownby four times a day. Four days later, on January 12th, the police found a white truck located in an apartment complex, which which was very similar to the vehicle a witness described. The police wasted no time in searching Michael Devlin's apartment where they discovered both of the boys. Michael was brought to justice and arrested, charged with 80 counts. He pleaded guilty in 2007. Michael is currently serving three life sentences with an additional 170 years in prison. When an inmate heard of Michael Devlin's crime, he stabbed him several times. He was treated and returned to the prison after his recovery. After being rescued, Sean Hornbeck was able to catch up with his classmates in school and even graduated a whole semester earlier. Currently, he is taking courses at a community college. Colleen Stan held in captivity for seven years. When Colleen was just 20 years old, she tried to hitchhike to a party for her friend's birthday located in Red Bluff, California. On May 19, 1977, she was picked up by husband and wife Cameron and Janice Hooker in a blue van. Colleen thought that since there was a child inside the van, that she would be safe, but she was wrong. Cameron Hooker, Janice's husband, was very sadistic and had the intentions of making Colleen his sex slave. He took a knife to Colleen's throat as he took her to an isolated area. At this area is where he tortured her and raped her brutally. Cameron Hooker then built a box that was about the size of a coffin where he forced Colleen to stay. He kept her right under a bed where he would only slide the box out and let her out for torturous sex. She would stay in this box for seven years. During those seven years, Cameron Hooker would beat her with whips, shocked her with electricity, and burned her. He also had renamed her Kay and told her that if she misbehaved, an extremely powerful organization called The Company would punish her. Janice, Cameron's wife, was also part of the abuse, also referred to Colleen as a piece of furniture. Janice also treated Colleen as if she was having an affair with her husband. Cameron also had written up a contract stating that he owned Colleen's body and soul. Colleen also said that after he would rape and torture her, they would have what Cameron referred to as cuddle time. During this time, he would tell her that he loved her and that everything would be all right. After several years, Colleen was eventually brainwashed completely. She even visited Cameron's family. Janice and her also started studying the Bible together. Cameron even shared plans with her that he wanted to abduct more women and that they would train them together. Eventually, Janice confessed to Colleen that her husband lied about the company and that she went to the authorities to tell them everything about Colleen as well as the girl they murdered named Marie Elizabeth Spanik who disappeared a year before they kidnapped Colleen. Cameron was sentenced to 104 years in prison, but Janice was never prosecuted due to the theory that she too was abused and scared of her husband. Steven Stainer Held in captivity for seven years and three months. 
On the 4th of December 1972, while walking home from school, seven-year-old Stephen was tricked by Irvin Edward Murphy, telling him he was going to give him a ride. The driver of the car was Kenneth Parnell, who was a convicted sex offender. He convinced the gullible Irvin Murphy that he needed help stealing a kid for a religious purpose. Later that week, Kenneth Parnell told Irvin that he was given legal custody by the state and that Stephen would be called Dennis Parnell here on out. According to Stephen, he said that Kenneth raped him over 700 times, while Kenneth himself said that that number was much higher than that. Stephen and Kenneth would move about 12 times over the next seven years and enrolled in the school that Stephen's parents actually sent missing posters to. When Stephen started getting older and entered puberty, Kenneth started his search for another child who was younger to kidnap. With the purpose of kidnapping a younger kid, Kenneth offered money as well as drugs to one of Stephen's friend, Randall. And on the 14th of February, 1980, Randall helped him abduct a five-year-old named Timmy White. At this point, Stephen knew he could not let Timmy suffer the way he did. So while Kenneth was away on a night shift, Stephen took Timmy on March 1st and they hitchhiked to a police station. The next day, on the 2nd of March, Kenneth was finally arrested. He was found guilty of kidnapping and only sentenced to seven years. He was paroled after only serving five years. Randall and Murphy were also convicted on lesser charges for their assistance. After this case, lawmakers in California changed the laws that would allow for consecutive prison terms for abduction cases. Though he had difficulties transitioning to a home without abuse and alcohol, Stephen eventually married in 1985 and had two kids. However, on the 16th of September in the year of 1989, 24-year-old Stephen died after his motorcycle crashed into traffic. More than 500 people attended his funeral, with Timmy helping carrying the coffin. At 72 years old, Kenneth Parnell on January 3, 2003, was arrested after trying to manipulate his caretaker to purchasing a four-year-old boy. He was successfully convicted and sentenced to 24 years in prison. Natasha Campush held in captivity for eight years and five months. On March 2, 1998, while walking to school, 10-year-old Natasha was kidnapped and thrown into the back of a van by Wolfgang Pricklopil. Over the next eight years, Natasha was kept in a tight cellar which was windowless and located underneath Wolfgang's garage. She was only allowed out gradually over the next few years. According to Natasha, Wolfgang was apparently nice at first, but as years went by, became sexually abusive and extremely violent. It got to a point where he would beat her up 200 times a week, and sometimes the beatings were so bad that her bones would break. Natasha was also forced to refer to Wolfgang as my lord, and was coerced to shaving off all of her hair and work as a servant. The sexual abuse and beatings were so traumatic that Natasha tried to commit suicide three times just to escape it all. Finally, when Natasha was told to vacuum Wolfgang's car on the 23rd of August 2006, he received a phone call that distracted him. Natasha saw this opportunity and ran. At 18 years old, she was identified by a scar she had, as well as DNA tests. A week after escaping, the coward Wolfgang killed himself by jumping in front of a moving train. When she escaped, she was only 106 pounds, about the same weight she was when she was abducted, and had only grown 6 inches, probably due to malnutrition. Her skin was pale chalk white and her eyes were incredibly sensitive to light. They also found that she had developed a heart condition. After escaping, she minimally visited her family. According to police, her life with her family prior to the kidnapping was also a bad one. She now still lives and owns the house where she was imprisoned. J.C. Dugard Held in captivity for 18 years and two months. 11 years old, J.C. Dugard was at a school bus stop on January 10, 1991, when someone with a stun gun knocked her out with it and pulled her into a car. Other classmates, as well as her stepfather, witnessed the kidnapping. Immediately, a large-scale search party began, which involved all of the South Lake Tahoe community. 
They even reached the show America's Most Wanted, but was unsuccessful in finding clues to bring her home. A husband and wife by the name of Philip and Nancy Garrido had taken JC and drove her to their home. During the first year, she was imprisoned and kept in a studio located in their backyard, and the studio was where she was continuously raped. In the later years, she would be allowed to go outside of the studio in their backyard and sometimes even outside their home with her abductors. JC reports that it was during this time when Philip Garrido would binge on drugs. He would even hear voices in the walls and Philip apparently also started writing a religious blog about a church he had just started. In the year 1994 and 1997, Philip had gotten JC Dugard pregnant. He fathered two daughters with JC and would introduce her herself to the kids as their older sister. On the 25th of August 2009, Philip was holding an event on the UC Berkeley campus for his church. The police that were on campus discovered he was a convicted sex offender, so he notified Philip's parole officer when they saw the two girls with him. Philip claimed that they were his daughters. The parole officers scheduled a meeting with him the next day. On the 26th, Philip, Nancy, JC, and the two girls arrived at the parole office. The parole all officers separated each one and interviewed them. However, it was Philip who revealed that the daughter he claimed as Alyssa was actually J.C. Dugard. Philip and Nancy were arrested and charged with kidnapping, rape, and imprisonment. On the 28th of April of 2011, they pleaded guilty and Philip was sentenced to 431 years in prison while his wife was sentenced to 36 years to life. After the arrest of both Philip and Nancy, JC and her daughters were brought to her mother, Terry. Due to the failure of Philip Garrido's parole officers during her 18-year disappearance, the state of California awarded JC a $20 million settlement. Currently, JC lives with her mom and daughters in California. They are all currently in therapy. Luckily, during captivity, JC did a good job with educating her daughters and now they are doing very well in school.